Chris Voss gave me a huge one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon, and I'm grateful to him for bringing you today's video. Tana partnered with Arden this time, up against Kadina, Jan Jansen, and Perforos. Forlander gets us into Smothering Tithe on turn 4, and that's about all we're doing, so Mulligan into a 3-lander with Sword of the Animist and creatures to equip it to is fine. Draw into a Bloodforged Battle Axe. Do we need to get that down right now? I don't think so. No turn 1 plays from our opponents. We get into another land, so yeah, we'll hold off on the Yavimaya just in case it helps our opponents. Play out the Sword of the Animist and pray that it survives. Impact Tremors for Perforos. And Blue Mana being held up by Kadena, which is not good when we are next in the turn order. Right, a Hammer of Nazan, so definitely want to... Hmm, I don't think we're going to get a chance to put down the Sacred Foundry tapped. We go for this now, then equip it next turn, and yeah, probably won't have another two mana spell, so maybe just Bloodforge Battle Axe. Anyway, we'll get down the Yavimaya. And we can shock it down next turn if needs be. So Kutzil is hopefully going to protect us against the blue player. And that is allowed into play, so no one's going to be able to do anything during our turn. Sword of Feast and Famine is in this list as well. No creature to equip it to at the moment. No black mana from the Mardu player, so just holding up three might be able to do something. Okay, and it looks as though Kadena is missing a land drop as well. So I hope we're actually going to get a game out of this. Discarded a Revenge of Ravens to hand size. Okay, a Kellen the Fae Blooded this time is a two mana spell we can cast if we want to. Go for the Sword of the Animist first of all. And let's swing in against Perforo, seeing as how he's the only one actually doing anything so far. This will be four damage and we get to hopefully go for a Rampant Growth a few times with Sword of the Animist. Uh, we've got quite a lot of white in the deck, so we'll go after a plains. Okay, gets us into another land. So let's just get that down, seeing as how it doesn't cost us life. And go for the tutor here, I think. And I was thinking of going for protection from blue and red, because that's good against most of what our opponents will be doing, I think. But maybe a haste enabler would be good, actually. So that we can get Tana down. It's not very flashy, but... Yeah, we could start swinging in with Tana next turn if we do that. But Sword of Feast and Famine is good, isn't it? Oh yeah, we'll go Sword of Feast and Famine. We can be a bit slower on the Tana while we don't have any overrun effects. So uh, Kellen is a really good commander in its own right, and that is in the Exile Zone now, so can be a 2-2 with Double Strike at some point if we like. Just played a Tana game in which this was partnered with Teves Sat, and uh, yeah, I wasn't really too happy about it. It was a bit all over the place, I think. I've only played it once, so I'm not sure how well it'll do in future games. Not that I'll probably play it again. But decided to partner up with Arden and make some kind of Voltron build. So we've gone largely equipment, as you would expect in Arden. And it seems to be doing alright so far, but I wonder how much of that is because our opponents aren't doing all that well. Now Jan Jansen is just kind of sitting there doing nothing, so hopefully he's not going to time out. As soon as he times out, the... Kadena's going to scoop as well. All right, not timing out, thankfully, so see what Perforos can do to us. Playing out the first commander of the game. And then a Chaos Warp going on to the Perforos, trading it out for nothing, seemingly. So, ah, there we go. It is a Mana Geyser that was on top. Solemn Simulacrum after managing to get into a Black Mana with the Blight Step pathway. And fixing the Black Mana further. Burnished Heart and managing to get into a third land, the Jeskai player, so... We'll be cracking that next turn, most likely, I would assume. Okay, a Brass Knuckles is really good with a Sword of Feast and Famine, so we could play that, equip it, get in a Bloodforged Battle Axe as well. Then we'll have six mana available to do what? I suppose we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Play the Sacred Foundry. Uh, we could get that in tapped and then just play it into a Sword or a Hammer of Nazan. Not much point in just having it sat there, so let's get that in tapped. Play the sword, and it's great being able to play, knowing that your opponents can't cast any spells during your turn. Not worthy that with this, it's not like Grand Abolisher, they can do abilities like Burnished Heart, but that's obviously of no consequence to us. So now, this is Pro Black and Green, and we'll draw a card when it hits as well, so we'll go in at Perforos again, and we'll get a Rampant Growth effect as well, which is going to untap once we hit with the sword. 
Might have one of each basic out, so go for a mount in there. And we draw with the Cat Legend, have our opponent discard down to four, and untap all of our lands. Made him discard another Perforos, which is a really scary one, so fine with me. And there's another land for us. One fewer lands that we can tutor out with Sword of the Animus, though. So let's get out our first commander in Tana and start trying to make some Saprilings with this, which is what we struggled on in the last game. Didn't get into any of the buff effects for this. And yeah, I suppose we might as well just play and equip this for three mana if we're doing nothing else. Throw it on our commander so it will be a 4-2 with Trample. Don't have any parallel lives effects in here for doubling up tokens, but it would double up the Bloodforged Battle Axe tokens as well as the Saprilings from this, of course, if... You wanted to make a similar deck to this and you've got a Parallel Lives floating about. A Rogue's Passage for the Mono Red player, just waiting for our opponents to really do something here, to be honest. A Brash Taunter from the Mono Red player. So that obviously makes it more difficult swinging over here, seeing as how we didn't go for the uh, protection from red previously. But we are going to have Brass Knuckles available. And potentially indestructible on Hammer of Nizan, although do we want to just wheel everything out here and hope that we refill the hand with Rite of Harmony might be an idea. Now Jan Jansen coming into play and sacrificing the Solemn Simulacrum straight away. So obviously drew a card with the Solemn there and then made a couple of treasure tokens. And there we see a Revel in Riches off the rest of the mana. And Kadena just continuing to go quite slow unfortunately. The Burnished Heart being sacrificed for some more mana. May well be able to wipe the board or something after all this though and buy a bit of time. Okay, there is a Marsh Flats for us this turn, so I think we want Arden. And then ideally I'd have Brass Knuckles. How much is Brass Knuckles without Arden? That'd be five mana. So then we could afford the Right of Harmony to draw a bunch of cards, but then we're not re-equipping. If we just go for the Arden, it'll be plus two, four, five. So we'll be getting seven damage through. I want to be casting the Rite of Harmony is the thing. So first off, I will cast the Rite of Harmony. Okay, so that lands. Uh, we can play the Marsh Flats. And then let's just go for play and equip on the Brass Knuckles. And we copy the spell when we cast it. Already got our creatures equipped, so... Uh, I was going to go for a tap land with the Marsh Flats. We might as well go for double strike onto the cat so that we can... Yeah, there's not much point getting multiple untaps, I don't think. Unless we can do something at instant speed. We could do this at instant speed, that'd be funny. Anyway, the original on Tatana. And uh, let's go after a land with the Marsh Flats so that we can continue to fix our colours. Just make that a Savannah. And the other Brass Knuckles can go on the other Legend. So now we've got Double Strike on both of them. And I think we'll go for Kazul down the middle and Tana to the right and the indestructible goblin successfully holding us off so far tutor for another basic with sword of the animist gonna run out of basics at this rate if our opponents don't do anything about us now we do know that our opponent has that mana geyser don't forget they could have used it on the previous turn but decided against it obviously so maybe it's worth just keeping a decent amount of mana untapped bunch of triggers upon landing the hits so Tana going to make a bunch of tokens. The Kutzil is going to trigger twice, once from each player. Untap the lands and discard. And a Bloodforged Battle Axe token. And we have yet to see the triggers from the second strike on the cat. Discarding a land. Draw an Inventor's Fair. And a Sun Titan. Won't mind discarding things if we have a Sun Titan in hand. And then four tokens come in, so the Right of Harmony going to trigger four times, and like I said before, there's obviously the second strike to contend with yet. Alright, a Pure Steel Paladin, Swiftfoot Boots is worth having as well. So a bunch more triggers. Can't do anything at instant speed without the Sagada's Aid, unfortunately. Unless we decided that we wanted to go for this again, which would be funny, but we're best holding on to it. So I'll draw four more cards, thanks to the Tana. And then we see a Beast Within. Uh, so that is something we can do at instant speed. Uh, this is indestructible, unfortunately. Could go after the sword, though, so let's do that. If we draw into a Swords to Plowshares before Sword of Feast and Famine untaps, we'll go after the Brash Taunter. Impact Tremors triggers on the Beast token entering. Managed to draw into single combat. Not too many board wipes in the deck. 
Don't know if I've got any protection for the board in the deck actually, like a Teferi's protection. As is often the case nowadays, I've often just thrown a deck together before recording, so... Maybe need some tweaks here and there. So we've got another Bloodforged Battle Axe token here. Uh, how much mana are they going to have to the mana guys? They've already got a boatload of mana anyway, so... With three cards in hand, does it matter if we tap out into it? I'm going to go for Hammer of Nizan. Place some artifacts into that so that we don't have to discard as much. Put that on the commander. And we force this player to discard a Vindicate, by the way, with the Sword of Feast and Famine. Get out the Swiftfoot Boots as well, so that our Tana has Hexproof. And that will equip for free, thanks to the Hammer of Nazan. And then we'll just send it off with the uh, Black Blade Reforged, so plus one, plus one for each land you control. We've done quite a bit of land ramp this game, thanks to the Sword of the Animist. So should have a big chunky Tana. And there it is, a 15-11 with Indestructible, Double Strike, Hexproof and Trample. So uh, let's see what the Mono Red player can do with the Perforos. A Pyrohemia is a means of dealing with the Saproling tokens, so that's good. And activating that straight away for 1 damage to uh, all the stuff. So we lose our Saproling tokens. Then we've got an Overwhelming Stampede in the deck. Uh, there's... Garrick's Uprising is it called, uh, the one where you can draw a bunch of cards based on power, but also it's a plus three, plus three overrun. Anyway, Reveling Riches going to actually win this player, I forgot about this, that's actually going to win this player the game, isn't it? So yeah, not necessarily the most intelligent move. Uh, there's going to be nine treasures here, so yeah, hopefully doesn't go after any more Pyrohemia activations. Uh, he's got one left. Can't kill off his own creature. Can't kill this either, so... Reveling Rich is not quite doing it, thankfully. We'll assume that Perforos worked that out. And the Brash Taunter damage is thrown at us from the Pyrohemia. We are against colours that can deal with artefacts nicely, so we're not out of the woods yet. It's funny that during his turn he could sacrifice a treasure token to make a couple of constructs, and then... Yeah, he could do that in response to a Pyrohemia activation. I don't see why Perforos would play into that, but... It is still possible that he could get the win. Alright, treasure being cracked anyway at the end step, so less likely to happen. Anguished Unmaking on two. The Black Blade Reforged is Exile, so a great depletion on this. I was actually looking for if Tana would be so kind to expand for us. Yeah, I was looking to go for something like the Boots, Trailblazer's Boots, that gives Unblockable. Might still be worth doing if we can buff this up high enough. Need a reduction on equip costs, which Pure Steel Paladin will be able to do for us. And that's why it was relevant to get the Swiftfoot Boots into play, because Anguished on Making could have just targeted the Tana there. Alright, and a Meat Hook Massacre. Not sure what was put into X there, but at least one to get rid of the Brash Taunter. Oh wow, they managed to... Oh, of course, the uh, toughness was greatly reduced on... Where is it? On the Tana. So, probably only had around two toughness. Managed to get rid of the Brash Taunter is good. Put Tana back in the uh, command zone. Uh, maybe just Tana and Arden next turn then. Some more Reveling Riches tokens and Meat Hook Massacre as well. Gaining some life, having us lose some life. Now I think it's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then that'll be 10, 11 power on the Tana. With Double Strike can take someone out. And I'm not liking this Pyrohemia over here. Um... Problem is, do they just, out of spite, set up the Reveling Riches win once we get the Saprolings? Oh, I forgot about that clause on Pyrohemia. One damage to each creature and each player on the way out. If there's no creatures in play, then you have to sacrifice this at the end of the turn here. So, yeah, obviously after the board wipe, that is the case. So, don't have to worry about this and the Reveling Riches anymore. And it's becoming more likely that the with the double strike the right of harmony is becoming more relevant that it's an instant um yeah especially if we want spot removal for this because they keep consistently making treasures and they're gonna keep doing so whilst we're getting into saprolings anyway kadena into play followed by the first morph creature six cards left in hand still have to get through blue counter magic potentially drawing a card when that enters yeah, because they might have been holding on to counter magic all this time, but just couldn't use it against us thanks to this thing, but... Mm, argument to be made for trying to go after it with Sun Titan. We could go Sun Titan and Arden. Try and give this haste. And a bunch of buffs. 
forgot about the buff from this previously actually, this gives plus 2 as well. So that's plus 11 to power. That'll be 17. So that'll be 34 damage that we can deal with this potentially. Might be worth doing. Draw into a stomping ground. Uh, Alright, let's try the Arden. See how quickly we get through this player's turn. One card left up here, it's not necessarily... It, uh, it well could be some spot removal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Could play a tap land and go for the Sun Titan. Eh, let's do that. And if this manages to land, we'll definitely go for the Kazool, I think. So it does enter. Grab the Kazool out of the bin. And we're looking pretty safe if this is allowed. Alright, awesome. So our opponents can't do anything now. Axe Guard Armory into play. That can be a Boros tutor for an equipment if we want it to be. Now we need to be very careful with how we click with Arden because it's pretty weird on Magic Online how you do it. So we'll go through to the beginning of combat and read very carefully what we have to do. Place your triggered abilities on the stack. Very helpful. So how is it worded? You may attach any number of auras and equipment you control to a permanent or player. So we're being allowed to target creatures here. So I'm assuming that we're targeting... Yeah, we're targeting the creature first. Then letting that trigger resolve, I hope. All right, yeah, that's looking good. So choose the auras and equipment to attach. We'll just put all of these on there, I think. So all of the equipment are highlighted here. Press OK. All right, and they all go onto the Sun Titan. So correctly worked out that that is 17 power with double strike and all the other stuff. Go through to the attack phase. We will swing into the left. One card in this player's hand. I'll hope that the Reveling Riches isn't relevant. Sun Titan going to trigger will just get us into... Yeah, just get us into a land is the only choice here. So I'm hoping Perforos just takes this and doesn't quit early because I don't know if we're going to get the correct triggers otherwise. Um, bunch of Blood Forged Battle Axe triggers. Untap our lands and we'll get the card draw from Kutzil as well. And I might even go for the Rite of Harmony even though we're not making use of it with Tana because we've got plenty of creatures here. So see what we draw first. Alright, there's a Steel Shaper's Gift. So yeah, untap with the first strike. And then we'll tap down with Rite of Harmony so that we will cantrip on all the creatures that enter this turn. Could go for cracking this as well, although we've got a tutor on the Steel Shaper's Gift anyway, so probably just leave it alone. And Hammer of Nizan goes very nicely with the um, Blood Forged Battle Axe. Uh, put one on Arden. As soon as the token comes into play, it is equipped for free thanks to the hammer. So I'll put two onto Arden and one onto Kutzil. I suppose we could float a bunch of mana here just in case it's relevant at instant speed, but I don't think it will be. Uh, the Perforos player valiantly taking it, I do appreciate that. And I'll just pile the Battle Axe stuff onto the uh, Sun Titan here, I don't think it really matters. Alright, so even more Axes into play. The Cat going to draw us again. I'm really just fishing for mana to, I'm paranoid about this thing, so would like to blow it up. So damage finally being dealt, all the triggers have resolved and... A case of getting our creatures into play now. Let's go Pure Steel Paladin. And that's going to allow us to move equipment around for free. As well as cantrip on equipment being played as well. To draw even more cards. Alright, Sagada's Aid is well worth having in play. This player deciding to scoop. It has been a pretty one-sided one. And yeah, it looks like this player scooped as well. So, uh, not sure what we would have drawn into there. Like I said, it was pretty one-sided at the end and... Only one card in hand over here. They don't fancy their odds of doing anything. But I don't think we were necessarily going to get into anything for the Reveling Riches, unfortunately. Uh, we were quite a ways away from drawing into something with Rishkar's expertise and wouldn't have had the mana for that anyway, I don't think. So a bit light on spot removal. Definitely light on protecting the board, but thankfully there wasn't too much interaction in that game. And this version of Tana performed much better than the previous one, so... Yeah, very happy with that. Wanted to build Tana for literally years at this point, but... I've rarely got chance, so before the new set comes out, thought I would squeeze it in. And uh, yeah, I managed to get a couple of games in with it. So hopefully you all enjoyed it. Big thank you to the patrons for their support. And I will see you all in the next one. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.